So there's this retired FBI agent by the name, I think, of John Cameron that um, talked about Ed Edwards, and he assumed that Ed Edwards did a whole bunch of crimes. Um, he's right, but he's wrong. Let me tell you something. He is onto something there. When he said Ed Edwards was the Zodiac Killer, he's right. Ed Edwards shot his victims, male or female. It was all about family. He had no family. His PTSD that caused him to do crimes would have been orphanage crimes. So he didn't care about family. He didn't like people making love. He didn't like people having arguments that broke up the family. It was anger, the kid that stole from him. That was his only kid. He had family, and then all of a sudden the family disagrees with him. Now, killing the taxi driver in that case may have been to throw them off a little bit. Um, there's a possibility that the taxi driver may have said something to him uh, the wrong way or something. Um, and he was doing crypto notes, which um, the Ed Edwards being Ed Edwards, crypto was solved by John Cameron, I guess. And um, him saying that about Ed Edwards is true. And he should not be laughed at about that because the man is intelligent enough to figure out that the crimes match. The M.O., the victimology and the signature match. Ed Edwards used to shoot people. Ed Edwards was more of a sissy. He liked to shoot people very vindictively. The crimes that he did was quick and easy. He he, Because less remorse, then that way he could write his books. He also didn't tell anybody about his murders until he knew that he was going to go to jail. Then he started confessing to more and more, only because of time progression to get himself the death penalty. Um, he knew if he'd been released, they would have shot him. He was smart enough to know that he used a shotgun or a pistol in each one of those crimes. So the MO and the victimology and the signature matched. Um, he started writing notes because that was his way of logging it down like his book. Now, Ed Edwards is what, uh, was not responsible for John Benet Ramsey and the Black Dahlia and all that. Um, no, he was not in jail with Al Capone. Nobody really knows about Al Capone. I doubt he was in jail with Al Capone. Uh, talking shit, maybe they did. Maybe they did, but Al Capone's not going to tell this smart guy what not to say, unless he's very convincing since Ed Edwards is a serial killer, that he's smart and he could influence the mafia, I guess. But, so, with his intention, he is correct about the Zodiac, but not about the other cases. He got his basis because he put two and two together. Why couldn't this be? Ed Edwards. So he started to match up things that would make Ed Edwards the Zodiac. Yes, he kind of invented that criminology to match Ed Edwards to the crime of the Zodiac because of maybe where he was and similarities. Okay? But the similarities of Ed Edwards is very quiet. He doesn't leave DNA, he just shoots them, you know? Like, quick and easy. The ones that have DNA, like John Benet Ramsey, he didn't kill John Benet Ramsey. That was a, the victimology is a young choked girl, sexuality. Ed Edwards didn't have sexuality like that. Ed, Ed Edwards' killing was anger, rage, PTSD rage. Snap. Bipolar, something in that sort, um, from brain damage of being abused mentally and in orphanages. It, it puts your mind, you know, back in that time, it wasn't easy. So, yes, he could be the Zodiac Killer. But the way John, uh, John Cameron put together the facts that 
Ed Edwards could possibly have done these crimes. This is what I did with Santa Bill McReynolds, matching him from 1957 all the way down to 2002 of being a serial killer. I matched all those crimes together with the fact that there was letters written, taunting of the police, young girls strangled, uh, some odd clues, suspects involved, um, DNA, everything like that. They all started matching. You know, in killer got away. Unknown killer got away. Unknown killer got away. This unknown killer was repetitious, was following the letters, was following the point is that this killer was doing the same thing over time. So what I did was I just happened to take Bill McReynolds, 66, and I went back showing that, did a background check and he was born in those time frames. And he would, I matched up the, the ages to his marriages where he was, just like John Cameron did. He just coincidentally happens to be professors in a lot of those states. He just happens to have a wife that wrote a play about a basement killing. He just happens to have a daughter go through the same thing 20 years ago. Coincidental, yes. Very coincidental, like Ken Maines would say. Possible? Yeah, probable? I don't know, whatever, however he says it. <clears throat> um, but the coincidence of matching up these killings being the same type of killings in same ways. Um, figuring out uh, that these states, that one person happens to be there. That's why I am insistent that Bill McReynolds killed John Benet Ramsey. And Bill McReynolds is a serial killer. He's extremely intelligent. He's another Ed Edwards. You're not going to find out. You could say I'm crazy right now. Oh, Santa didn't kill her. He was already eliminated by law. Yes, he's a serial killer. Do you know how many serial killers got away? Look at John Wayne Gacy. He had people buried under his porch and had parties in his goddamn house. And and Jeff Dahmer brought the police inside and it stunk like dead people and he had dead skulls in the refrigerator and he's offering them a cold beer. Come on. Um, what was his name? Not Ed Kemper. Uh, Ed Kemper uh, was... <laughs> Ed Kemper was just a big bully, but um, uh, there was another one I forgot. He was in New York or something, and he was kidnapping these these kids, and and um, and he said he sat down in a Dunkin' Donuts right next to the cops, and they were talking about the serial killer, and they're like, "You better go home. He might kill your wife or something." He's like, "No, it's okay," and he was acting like he was on patrol. Um, uh, uh, Ted Bundy, one of the most famous serial killers, played his own lawyer. Come on, America, wake up and smell the coffee. You. He had a bar card or whatever. He played his own lawyer. You you can actually play your own lawyer. So, uh, oh, listen, you play your own lawyer, you can prove yourself innocent and you can prove yourself guilty either way. So, they're that smart that they could walk away with it. And when they get caught, okay, no problem. I'm sorry, Your Honor. So, Bill McReynolds is that smart. Bill McReynolds was a journalism Professor, all seriousness, the newscasters are after paid. I'm an actor. I'm not SAG. But when they're newscasters like WSVN in South Florida, Craig Stevens, he's a newscaster, uh, uh, Rick Sanchez, CNN, whatever, Anderson and all them, those, they're, 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 they're announcers. They read scripts. They read scripts. So they get paid after union. And Bill McReynolds is the one that teaches these people how to talk. Like, for instance, Hi, it's Johnny, and I'm live here at the shooting. I'm outside the hospital where sources say they only can say certain things. They cannot tell you the truth. We're going to let you find out as soon as possible. They're, they're scripted, okay? Even though there's no script out there, they're improvising, but they, they, they improvise. They, they are taught how to improvise, how to act on TV. They are taught how to talk on TV. It's scripted. The people that teach those reporters, that teach those newscasters, those newspapers, 
Back then, it was journalism professor. Now that the internet started, it's impossible to be a journalism professor. People are famous now for doing makeup and stuff. A journalism professor is the one that teaches the media, the news, how to project what the police find. There's a murder. Oh my God, little John Benet is murdered. You know what the police are going to automatically do. The family's going to be automatic suspects and watched, no matter what, in a murder. Because that's natural and for protection and the media doesn't know what's going on well i heard fellas last night i heard that they got dna do you hear the screaming i heard the screaming i'm the neighbor i heard the screaming nope that's bullshit the neighbor didn't hear john benet scream in the basement at two o'clock in the morning on christmas night everybody's drunk and high well, bullshit sound travels no yeah okay yeah believe that she had duct tape on her mouth how did she scream Nobody heard her, okay? So, what happens is he teaches the media how to projectile clues, how to project the truth but not the truth. The police are not going to tell you the truth. The police held out information on the Delphi killings to make sure that they could match their suspect. The police are not going to tell you 100% what happened. But now, with the media's help and the National Enquirer and the news and CNN... We're live with new information about John Benet Ramsey. It's scripted. Everything's scripted. And he's the one that taught the media how to talk about that case and throw that case around like freaking puzzle. He is a media frenzy, show-off, narcissistic serial killer that knew what he was doing. He, his, his charm, his charisma like Ted Bundy's, well, his charm and charisma was to teach his students how to properly talk on TV. My hero. But he just happened to be Santa Claus. He played a role in his, this case, Santa Christmas Night. Um, fantasy. Fantasy. Great movie writing. Imagine he knew that he was going to be involved in this case and he would get away with it. It'd make the movie of a lifetime. Maybe movies on nighttime and lifetime and listen out about the Ramses. The point I'm getting at is if you want to catch the killer of John Benet Ramsey, you have to look outside the box. Forget it. Burke has autism. He did not kill John Benet. The mom did not kill John Benet to take her baby with her. No. She's not sick in the head to take her baby before she dies. No. None of that psychological syndrome, all those rumors about this and that and Don Pond and this and that. Listen to me. Santa Bill did this crime just like the other crimes that I mentioned before. 57, 74, 77, 79, 82, 96, then I, John Bonet, and then I believe 2003, to be honest with you, I really believe 2003 that he's Bill Rothstein in a pizza bombing incident. It's too coincidental. I can't find the girl killed in that case, though. That doesn't make sense. But he could have changed his mood. He's 66. He could be going senile by now. Uh, he would have been 72 then. Um, and he may have changed his MO. Getting old. Doesn't want to kill no more girls. He's killed enough of them. So it could be him. But pay attention to me. Bill McReynolds is a serial killer. Some This this video needs to go viral. I know there's going to be a lot of bullshit talk about these videos. I know what people are going to say. This, I, I'm, I am not crazy. I'm not crazy. I am as crazy as John Cameron is then. John Cameron was right about... the. Zodiac. Ed Edwards is the Zodiac. But he was on that role. And that role model is a totally different person. There are 300 million people in America. Back in 96, let's just say there was 200 million people. You can't think there's a doppelganger, 100 serial killers, 
active in the United States and there can't be two very similar serial killers. One of them happens to be Ed Edwards that grew up at the same time frame, different age and whatever. He's like the doppelganger. Um, it's, it's possible. They're not twins. That's not what I'm saying. They are not twins. What I'm saying is that, well, you don't know. Maybe they could be brothers. They could be brothers. We don't know that. Biologically, nobody knows if they're brothers. That could be possible. I have a twin brother I found out at 50. At 50 years old, I found out I had a twin brother. So don't play with the possibilities of DNA and genealogy. He could be a, a brother of his. But the point is, they need to do an in-depth ba uh, background investigation on Bill McReynolds. Bill McReynolds was at the crime scene of numerous crimes that they could match up. They could match it up. He left clues. He left clues. He's that smart. He wrote it all down somewhere in books. Um, maybe just a fantasy of his that he copied and he didn't write it down. Um, but I would think that, that he would have written novels and, under another name. And um, I think that he set them up like the game of Clue. Very intelligent game. Clue. Who did it? Who done it? Someone's going to solve it. It's me. It's Bill McReynolds.